I'm here at HPE Discover in Las Vegas with Stuart Strickland. And one of the things that I've heard a little bit about here is wireless 6 versus 5G. And wh what's the difference between the two and, and how do you know when to use one or the other? Well, so the first and most obvious difference is that you can buy Wi-Fi 6 today and we're waiting for 5G. Uh, we expect that in the longer term that Wi-Fi 6 will, or Wi-Fi generally, will continue to be the choice for um, dense, um, high-capacity environments that are locally managed and that um, cellular will continue to excel at what cellular has always excelled at, providing macro level coverage and mobility. Um, but the real challenge, something we'll be able to do in the, in the era of 5G that we haven't before, is to really manage mobility between these local oases of good coverage and, and the wide world within which people have to travel in between. So um, providing information about the cellular network, its perimeter, what sort of quality of service it can offer so that operators can manage a handover from the, 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 the WAN outside to a LAN inside where they might not have such good 5G coverage. That's I, and as a as a customer, I have noticed that that is not always the most elegant handoff when I'm going from the LTE network to a it's, uh, it's a WAN not. today. It's not, and I've noticed that as well. Um, it's done in an open loop. The operator will make a decision, or the handset will make a decision about whether or not to stay on Wi-Fi or go to cellular based largely on whether or not the cellular signal is visible, um, often without regard for whether or not the Wi-Fi signal has deteriorated because you've walked out of the building into the parking lot and then driven away. Um, so you can have a, a, a problem when you run out of it. Mobility within a Wi-Fi network is great. I mean, yeah. if you wander around this stage you'll, you know, you'll, you'll, or this event, you'll stay continuously within, within Wi-Fi coverage. Um, but that, that, that boundary between the, the cellular and the Wi-Fi, that, that really needs to change. And I think one of the opportunities for that to change is that there, there's a distinction that's been prevalent in the, in the cellular world between trusted Wi-Fi networks that operators manage themselves and so-called non-trusted or untrusted Wi-Fi networks that anybody else manages. And that, that can be anything from a coffee shop, which is an open network, to you know, a highly managed, uh, high quality, highly secure uh, enterprise Wi-Fi network. Um, and they basically treated the untrusted networks as just some, 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 some hole that you wander into. Um, but we have an opportunity in the 5G specifications, and this is provided for um, in the interfaces, to provide the cellular operators with information about the networks that other people run. So what's their backhaul? What's their capacity? How much is the current load on them? Where is their perimeter? Um, what's the quality of experience, the, the bit rate that you're going to get if you, if you make an intelligent decision to hand over to that network? So it'll be much more of a, a continuous experience between, if we do our jobs right, between Wi-Fi in the building and, and cellular in the wider world. What about securities? So, I mean, there's there's security concerns for Wi-Fi six. There's security concerns for five G. How does how does security? Like, so, so the first thing I'll say about security is that if you look at sort of the history of technology, um, every time a defensive structure has been built, something has been built to breach it. So, you know, uh, fortifications and catapults they develop in parallel and will continue. So I think whatever security mechanisms either the cellular or the Wi-Fi world puts in place, that needs to be a continuous process of evolution in order to be effective. And there are mechanisms to, to keep security up to date. Um, historically, Wi-Fi and cellular networks have both sought to secure the air interface with encryption, and they've had very similar techniques involved in order to do that. Um, the main obvious difference that I think a lot of people are familiar with is the open network in the cafe, where you get a warning, hey, you know, we can see everything that you're doing, um, or a, a, a network where maybe everyone shares the same password that's written on, on, the, on the menu, which obviously is not very secure. Yeah. Um, and the, the, the fact that people encounter those kinds of networks so frequently makes them think often that Wi-Fi is less secure than cellular, which is really not the case. I, I think the main difference between the security mechanisms of Wi-Fi and of cellular are that cellular has basically one method of, of, of giving out credentials and authenticating them, that's the SIM card and the database of, of subscribers, whereas in a, in a Wi-Fi enterprise network you can have uh, certificates or username and password or any number of other, other mechanisms. With Wi-Fi, six, um, we have a new security regimen called um, WPA3, came after WPA2, obviously, um, which adds 
a few things that make it a more secure system inherently, but one thing that I think will change the experience of Wi-Fi for most people who wander around in public, and that is um, the uh, implementation of opportunistic wireless encryption so that you can get onto an open network even if you don't have a password and even if they don't ask you for credentials and the network will provide you with a key and then from that point on your your interaction with the network um, is is encrypted as though you were on um, an enterprise quality network so I think that's really going to change the perception of Wi-Fi networks as being less secure than than cellular the, the reality is that if you're in a, a properly uh, configured enterprise network, you you are secure, and the local environment is deciding, or the local administrators are deciding who's going to get onto the network, what they're able to do once they get there, which users are able to talk to to which, and I think that that granularity of control is really important to most of the uh, most of our enterprise customers in, in how they how they figure out who's going to get to see what. How much adoption has there been of, of Wi-Fi 6 so far? Well, Wi-Fi 6 is just kicking off. Um, we're, we're a shipping product, um, and you've probably seen in the news various uh, companies who are talking about trials and it's rolling out. If you go on Amazon, you can see consumer-grade products that are that are for sale. Um, we expect the adoption to be quite a bit quicker than the 11 AC rollout a couple of years ago, um, and it, it, it's on track. Um, I, I, I really I, I hesitate to speculate about when you know you'll see a, a, a widespread ecosystem and people will have forgotten about 11AC, um, but I'm pretty sure that's going to become uh, avail become the norm long while you're still waiting for five for 5G new radios. All right, well, fair enough. Thanks, Stuart. All right, thank you.